is enough to do to my private home, to my children, to my family. We suffered enough. Let's have a shelter in the king's palace. Let's have some rest. Is something wrong with it? Is something bad with it? Finally, we found some shelter. Do not imagine that you'll escape in the king's palace. As I said, no one had to warn Esther Levitz. She understood very well, and she understands very well. You may wonder what I've done, and the, a Jewish grandmother from Prairie Village, and you know where that is. And, um, but I have had a really long and probably strange journey for the last number of years. We won't mention any number. But <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, anyway. Um, it all began, really, uh, UCI began with a meeting of 20 people on my back porch in 1991. And that was uh, 20 years ago. And it eventually led to the Unity Coalition for Israel, which uh, I founded on my back porch. Anyway, uh, today uh, we give a collective unified voice to more than 200 Christian and Jewish organizations that reach out to millions of Americans. Our message tells Congress and the media that Israel is not just a Jewish issue, that millions of Christians resolutely endorse the principle of peace with security for the state of Israel. And because we speak with a united voice, um, members of both Congress and the media are definitely getting our message and we really believe that they are paying attention. For 2,000 years it seemed utterly impossible that the Jews would return to their ancient homeland and it was only by the grace of God and the steadfastness of the Jewish people um, throughout the world that has kept the dream alive. But I've, in these 20 years, I've learned that uh, Bible-believing Christians also held this dream. And now we've found each other. And for 20 years, we've been working together to make sure that Israel continues to exist as the one and only Jewish state. Christians, I'm sure you know that the, the biblical prophets promised the return of the Jews to their homeland. They also promised that this journey would not be easy. And Jews and Christians now work together in the Unity Coalition for Israel. And we've paved the way for other groups that are following our lead. We've built warm relationships, working as a team, supporting that little nation on the edge of the Mediterranean Sea. And it's, of course, surrounded by 22 Arab countries. And uh, w with few exceptions, they have no desire for peace with the Jewish state. Um, all they would have to do is simply recognize the existence of the state of Israel. And they consistently refuse to do that. 63 years of terrorism and five all-out wars have kept Israelis from enjoying the fruits of their labor to build a dynamic democracy in their ancient homeland. Um, they are the real underdog in the Middle East, although they're not pictured that way. And they're struggling to survive in a sea of medieval hate. What Israelis have been experiencing for years finally caught up with the United States 
on 9-11 when the demons of jihad targeted violence were let loose upon the world. Now the American people are slowly understanding what the Israelis have been living with since the rebirth of the State of Israel, ever since 1948, a constant state of siege. In spite of this, the U.S. government has pressed Israel for restraint, that you have to show restraint, to withdraw from land and to continue to negotiate in the face of horrendous terrorism. You probably know that this past week in Itamar, Israel, a family of five was massacred, leaving three young orphan children. This heinous act was perpetrated by maniacal Palestinian terrorists. Other Palestinians celebrated this slaughter by handing out candy to show their support for this monstrous act. But the pressure on Israel by U.S. and other world leaders will continue, I'm sure. We Americans would never tolerate watching our own children falling victim to such barbaric acts, and yet we are silent. The training begins when the children are very young, as toddlers, um, the, and uh, these particular terrorists, uh, it's coming out, were trained by their own parents, spiritual leaders and teachers, and television programming to uh, commit these atrocities. And yet the world remains largely quiet regarding all the wanton acts of brutality. So um, the um, tragedy of the Fogel family uh, being butchered in their home serves as deadly reminder of the culture that brainwashes the expendable children of the Islamic culture. And our government must now send a clear message that terrorism is not acceptable anywhere against anyone and um, any time. UCI calls for very vocal condemnation of this culture of death and strongly urges that Congress hold hearings on the inroads of Islamists on our communities and on our college campuses. So um, perhaps uh, one of the most surprising facts is that the U.S. military under uh, General Keith Dayton has been recently responsible for training these two of these latest killers and um, under the guise of uh, training a defense security force. Ironically also, it has been verified that the Fogel family that was just murdered had been transplanted from Gaza, Gaza to Itamar to promote peace. So uh, anyway, um, the, the uh, two people that were arrested have uh, admitted to having gone through American military training and that's paid by our tax dollars. So, um, this is really not the end of the story because Christians are beginning to understand that they too are being targeted as infidels and are being murdered and tortured by Islamists all over the world. And we are definitely locked into this battle together, Jews and Christians against radical Islamic forces that threaten all of Western civilization. We'd love to hear your background, what you've done. Whatever she's got for us, we want to hear it. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, I'll take, back, uh, take you back 20 years to the beginning of UCI and a little bit about my husband, my late husband, Vrem. Even before we were married, he was part of he was act, an activist, and he was part of the Sonnenberg Institute. And this was a very um, secretive group of people who were, who were traveling around the country, purchasing, bar begging, bar getting money, 
purchasing arms that were later used to win the, the war, the 1948 war, when Israel was for, an, announced as a country by the United Nations. And then um, they, they would purchase the arms and the arms were, and the military equipment was all broken down and they, the story is that that that, uh, that it's supposedly true that they didn't lose one nut or one bolt from all of this equipment, and I think it was really this equipment that enabled the Israelis to defeat these five army, five Arab armies that attacked the uh, Israel as a when it was one day old, you know. And so, of course, you know, a lot of the uh, Palestinians had been urged to leave and are still considered refugees three generations later. After 63 years, they're being kept in camps, you know. And um, so anyway, my husband was, was really an activist and to use him as a very bad example they he, he was actually arrested for procuring this these this military equipment and he went to jail and he had a sentence of 90 days and it was committed to 60 days but he did serve time for actually doing that so that's that was some of his some of his story <laughs> and, that, and that wasn't just weapons that he was working to secure, but it was the manufacturing equipment that would enable them to build what they needed to defend themselves. Right. Uh -huh. in, the, in that first war that, uh -huh. like you said, that they're just Can one day old. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Just, you know. Can you imagine that? I mean, that's, uh, how incredible is that? Uh, you become a nation yesterday and you're under attack today. Uh, but God already working behind the scenes to get this new nation everything she needed to defend herself. Awesome. And um, I would say that my husband was an inspiration to me. I used to just sit by the telephone and listen to him talk to people and take notes and, <laughs> and um, sort of pity patted along behind him, you know. So anyway. You were uh, just a disciple. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. <laughs> But I had worked for Israel Bonds before that, and I'm old enough to know what it felt like to be, to, uh, before there was an Israel, to be Jewish. And, and you know, e even in Kansas City, there were many areas where Jews could not buy homes, you know. And um, even a menorah hospital had to be funded and built because the um, Jewish doctors couldn't practice in the other hospitals. They were limited. I think it was to like 5% of the staff or something like that. So I grew up in that climate, which is certainly different today, but I knew how important Israel was in terms of uh, Jewish pride and understanding where we came from and maybe where we're going, who knows. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so that's kind of my history. And then um, I, would, I would say that Rem and I had many rewarding experiences together, though, and that it began as a couple by hosting Senator Bob Dole's first Johnson County event in our backyard before anybody knew who he was. And, and most, most of the people, had, had never met him. And by 1968, when he had been elected, we were totally immersed in Kansas politics and actively participated in every Bob Dole campaign for the Senate, and later in his run for vice president with G Gerald Ford at the head of that ticket, you know. And then um, when, after Vrem passed away, I served on Bob Dole's National Finance Committee when he ran for president in 1988. Anyway, and we were, we were honored or really privileged to, to be at three inaugurations and, um, 
and that was kind of exciting. Yeah, I don't know if you were planning on mentioning this or not, but uh, the Doles were the honorary chair at a Purim Gala this, this winter. Uh, every year they'll, the, at the Purim Gala in uh, Johnson County, they will honor uh, someone who uh, God has used to be a great friend to Israel. And so different people, Gentile and Jew. Well, Esther Levins was honored uh, this last year, and the Doles were the, the honorary chairs of that Purim Gala uh, honoring Esther Levins. And so it was just kind of a neat thing um, to, to see. I mean, they're, they're getting up there. <laughs> and uh, uh-huh. uh, just the relationship that they've had over the years. So I don't know if you were planning on mentioning that, but I wanted to make sure. I outed you a little bit, so that's good. That's good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And also, what else too, am I thinking? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, in the time that we have left, could you maybe fast forward and talk about, you know, just some of the support that you've given to, say, Benjamin Net Not Yahoo over the years and, okay. and some of the things that uh, your organization has done lately in support of Israel. And then okay. I want to point out just a few headlines before we close today. So if you could share some of that, uh, that would be very insightful for this group. Okay. Um, I had a mentor. We, we've had conferences in Washington for a, for a lot of years in the beginning. And um, at every uh, conference, we had speakers that, and you see them, Wally Ferris is on, on Fox News on national television, and Frank Gaffney is, and all these people, we started together. And I mean, we, we became sort of a fast group of close uh, friends at, because we all believed alike and very few other people joined us, at the, you know, in those days. But anyway, um, my, uh, w- one of the people that we had at all of our, er- every conference was David Barillon, because at that point he was editor of the Jerusalem Post. He was such a wonderful man, and he was a world-class pianist, and he actually played in Kansas City before Netanyahu became prime minister. And then when Netanyahu became prime minister, he selected uh, David bar to be his right-hand person. He was in the office right next to him. And so here we had, surprisingly, entree. It's kind of amazing <laughs> you know, to, um, to, the, to the prime minister. And so he called on us twice to have two major events in Washington. And the first one was um, when uh, Clinton was president and was giving him a really hard time and snubbed him when he came to uh, Washington. And usually people, uh, foreign dignitaries would stay at the Blair House but he um, had to stay at a, a commercial hotel. So he was staying on the 10th floor of the Mayflower Hotel. And, um, and David Barlon, who, who had been at all of our conferences, uh, called and said that we had to have an event for him and that we would, um, uh, it would have to be, you know, at, at the, so anyway, we had it at the J.W. Marriott Hotel, and um, he, was, he was just magnificent. Cal Thomas was our master of ceremonies, and Kay Arthur, does that name ring a bell? Kay Arthur, who has written a book, Israel, My Beloved, it was my co-chairman. And we had about 3,000 people at that event. And so, uh, and that was really quite an experience, but it was less than a year later that uh, David 
called us again and said, you've got to do this again because uh, he's coming in. And so that was the case. And we did have it at the Mayflower Hotel, the second event. And they gave us the ballroom that time. So we, and in nine days, we, we turned people away. I mean, it was just jam-packed. And he, the, the newspapers said, at, oh, he began his speech that day by saying, uh, this must have been ordered by God, you know. So anyway, that, and he, he started with tears in his eyes because he knew he was going to get clobbered. He wa- went from our event to the White House, and, and, he, the, and the papers reported he was able to hold his own on that. So that was kind of interesting. That's, um, and that's, that's a neat thing, to, you know, for, for organizations like Esther's, you know, that, that you know, God's people can come together and give support in a pretty dark time, in a pretty difficult time, and for him to know that there are people rooting for him and for Israel all around the world, and in a moment's notice, thousands of them show up to hear him speak and to give support. I mean, that's, yeah, that'd have to mean the world. I had the printer at my house on Saturday, and he printed the invitations, which were an oversized postcard. And he just happened to have a picture of Netanyahu, so we threw that on it. And it was, and, and. So there are people flying in from all over to be there. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, definitely. Yeah. From every, I mean, people from Canada were coming down in buses, too. I mean, it was quite incredible. And there, there were Christians and Jews together at this event, you know, at both of them. You know, really? One of the things that um, I, I want, you, want you all to see is, you know, Esther Levins uh, has a history that goes back, but it's been consistent in terms of, of, of providing uh, support for the Jewish people and rallying support for the Jewish people. I mean, the, do, you, do you see the parallel with the book of Esther? Um, you know, she's speaking to the king. In this case, the king she's got access to is... The United States government <laughs> and the people that will talk to the king and uh, and are and 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 how many years has uh, UCI 20 20 years uh-huh. yeah so 20 I, I want to we're almost out of time I want to show the the video of the rabbi uh, hold on just we don't want to do that just yet but but uh, the rabbi that spoke at the Purim Gala uh, this guy I mean guys this guy could have could preach in any of our churches. I mean, he's bringing a word from the book of Esther uh, that would blow you away, but he gives a very solemn warning in that, and I just wanted to, I want you to see a few minutes of that. But before we do that, uh, Esther, could, could you just, in your own words, sum up what UCI is doing? I mean, just sum up the, 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 the goal, the focus of your organization uh, because after you do that, I want to give them the URL for your website, how they can get the information. But could you just tell us, just as best you can in summary, what it is that UCI does, what you're doing um, uh, for, the, for the nation of Israel? Well, I think the best thing we've done is to bring Christians into the, into the picture. Because, you know, one by one by one, we'd bring these groups on board, and everybody was saying, you can't do it, it's not going to work, and, you know. And, I mean, I've been privileged to glimpse into the Christian world and to understand, maybe through the politics that I was able to participate in, the the meaning of, of activists and the meaning of a vote because they vote and, 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 and how important it is to have a whole body of people who really get it and who really understand the dangers and the threats in the world today. And so, uh, more so really than the Jewish community, those have been, that's been such an amazing surprise to find. I, I told you there was a poll 
that was given about the time I started this group. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, that 70% of Americans support Israel. And uh, I knew that, that Jews represented like 2%. So I thought, okay, I've got to go find that 68% because I know my husband would have gone in, pounded on Bob Dole's desk and said, the, you're not gonna, they're not going to use the settlements as trading stock, you know, yeah. or the settlers. But anyway, so, um, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> so, so I, I thought we've just got to find these supporters of Israel and bring them all together. And that's kind of how that started. And really. that is an amazing thing. So 70% of America is pro-Israel. She, she knows 2%. Who are the other 68? Well, it's you guys. And what her, what her organization does mainly is it's, it's, it's keeping you in the know of what's really going on. Thank you. That's and, right. And, well, no, that's no, what No, that's said. right. That's right. <laughs> and you need to know. You need to be paying attention to what is going on because how are we going to pray accurately if we don't know what's really going on? How are we going to accurately uh, be a blessing as we're commanded in Scripture to the Jewish people? Uh, and so what I want to encourage you to do, it's up there. Okay, uni israelunitycoalition.org slash subscription. And it'll take you all of one minute to fill in your name and information. And then you'll get anything from daily to weekly, whatever flavor you'll see. How you Action can get. alerts. Yeah, that uh -huh. kind, yeah, all kinds of information. Uh, there is a staff of people that are working to make sure that what is happening uh, concerning the nation of Israel, that that is getting communicated uh, to all the interested parties. And so I really encourage you to, to sign up just so that you'll be knowledgeable about current events. There's a lot of things that happen that get glossed over in the news that may not make the news or it, it may make the news in Jerusalem, but it doesn't make it here. And so uh, you'll, you will be an informed uh, prayer partner, you'll be an informed uh, blessing to the people of Israel. Make sense? <clears throat> I want you to, just for a few minutes here, and then we'll wrap up and we'll close with a time of prayer. Um, give your attention, first of all, uh, you're going to say thank you, but for, we're going to give our attention to uh, Rabbi Benny Elon, and uh, I want you to hear him describing the present day dangers that face the nation of Israel. But as you give him your attention, could you also say thank you to Esther Levins for coming and sharing with us? Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.